Graduate student of computer engineering at Queen's University, uh, researching robotics and computer vision, and you may have seen his fabulous AR pool um, here in the expo. So you can thank him for that, uh, that fabulous installation. You can take it from here, Kim. All right, sweet. All right, so yeah, Kevin Hughes from the Robotics and Computer Vision Lab at Queen's University, which is located in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. So I got a slide here just for reference of roughly where that is. It's about, it kind of like smack dab in the middle between Toronto and Montreal. Nice little town by the water. So before I talk about the AR pool demo, I actually kind of want to back up a little bit and uh, talk about the history of kind of how we got to be where we are. And for our lab, this really all started way back in 1999 um, when my supervisor, Dr. Michael Greenspan, <clears throat> Uh, exclaimed this after absolutely just flubbing a shot in a game of pool with his colleagues at a conference in Vancouver. He exclaimed that it would be easier to build a robot to play pool than to master the game himself. So a few years after he, he made that quote, um, our lab kicked off the Deep Green project, which was a project to build a robot to play pool. Deep Green being a bit of a play on words from Deep Blue, the uh, famous chess program that can play chess, uh, computer program that can play chess. Um, and that project ran from 2002 to 2007, and we potted the first ball fully autonomously with the robot in 2004, and uh, from then onwards we kind of worked on just improving the system. So you can see some of the, uh, some video of the robot in action here. Um, and this slide I just included because it was one of the, um, one of the things we did late in the robot project that was really cool, it's called the, the local vision system, which this is what the robot sees from its end effector as it's taking a shot. So it's, just, it's really just a really neat perspective that I wanted to include when I was going through the robot material. So you can see it sinking this, uh, I think that's the 10, of, uh, 10 striped in the pocket there. So the Deep Green project was a success. We completed the robot, um, but it kind of left us thinking like, now what? Uh, the big thing with the robot, it was, bolted to the roof of the lab. It was really heavy. And essentially, Deep Green was lonely. Nobody could play with him. He was just alone in the lab. And, uh, and secondly, and probably a little bit more relevant for this track, is um, there wasn't really a market for pool playing robots. No one really wanted to buy them. They were too expensive. Um, so we kind of started trying to think, uh, what could we do now? And that's kind of how we got into augmented reality. We realized that a lot of the systems and a lot of stuff we'd learned while working on Deep Green was applicable to uh, an, an, an augmented reality system. We just needed to focus on kind of the, uh, the user interface and the, the graphical output of it. So uh, that's, that's kind of how AR Pool was born. Um, AR Pool is the convergence of billiards and computer gaming technology, and we really believe that AR Pool could be the next evolution in the game of pool. So this gives you a little bit of an idea about what AR Pool can do. Um, but in the next slide, I'm going to go into a little more in depth about how exactly we're augmenting. So there's kind of three main components to how we're augmenting pool with AR pool. The first is, most importantly, the real-time shot feedback. It's kind of what you saw on the last slide. Uh, shot suggestions, which are provided by an artificial intelligence. And um, the kind of overall enhanced visual aspect that we're adding to the game. And uh, this is definitely not to be overlooked, because I think that's one of, the, one of the really neat aspects of it. So a little more in depth about what I mean by the real-time shot feedback. The system measures the strike angle between the cue and the cue ball, and then it simulates using the physics simulator um, which other balls are going to be affected by that shot, and then it draws those trajectories down onto the table. Um, and kind of one of the interesting, cool ways that we provide feedback to the user is that if they line up, just like they did right there, the pocket will actually glow green if they're going to pot that ball. And if they're going to scratch, meaning they're going to sink the cue ball, which is not something you want to do in pool, uh, then the pocket will actually glow blue. So it'll kind of provide feedback that that's not a shot you want to make. The second way we augment it, which is the suggested shot provided by the artificial intelligence, um, is we draw these on the table using dash lines beforehand. So you can see here in, in this frame, the AI has suggested potting the blue ball in this pocket right here, and it's talking about leaving the cue ball somewhere in this area. Um, that's one of the really key things in terms of pool strategy, is where the cue ball gets left after the shot, because you really want to make sure that you set yourself up good to be able to keep potting balls successfully, and that's kind of how you win the game, and kind of a similar idea over here. So I couldn't resist taking the opportunity to talk just a little bit about how AR Pool works, even though it's the business tract, because I'm a technical guy and this is kind of what I like about it. 
Um, so it's a, it's a single camera, single projector system. So it's projected augmented reality. And um, it's just a single uh, camera and projector above the table that projects down and kind of looks down onto it. So that's really all there is for hardware in the system. There's no sensors or anything in any of the pool balls, the pool queue, or the table. That's all regular pool hardware. It's just the, the single camera, which means that AR pool is primarily software-based. So there's essentially four major software systems. There's the computer vision system, or the perception system, physics simulation, artificial intelligence, and then finally, the computer graphics, which is kind of what um, brings it all home and makes it um, accessible to the users. The computer vision system is responsible for um, basically detecting all the elements of the pool game so we know what that information is. And uh, to do that, we also need to calibrate the camera so that we can talk about where these elements are in terms of a real world coordinate system. So this is kind of what the camera sees from up above. And this figure right here is just um, an example of, of what our algorithm that is looking for the queue looks like. Um, here's just kind of an example of how the ball detection works. We, um, we perform background subtraction type process. Uh, we do some sh uh, shape analysis and connected components. That's kind of determining those circles there. And then finally, we use a support vector machine that uh, gets the final say on whether or not something is or is not a ball. And we use a similar machine learning type process to detect which ball is which and eventually assign ball ID numbers to each ball that we've detected on the table. The next part is the physics simulation. I know probably a lot of people, one of our most common questions is whether or not we can uh, account for spin on the balls. And the, uh, the physics simulation fully accounts for spin, English, rebounds, um, everything you can imagine with related to pool. For more information, you can refer to this, uh, this paper that we published on the physics simulation. Another kind of neat aspect is the artificial intelligence. This is what suggests what shot the user sh could make on the t or should make on the table. And what's interesting about it is, um, contrary to a game like chess where we can really try out all the possibilities, pool is an infinite game space. So we have to use a subsampling approach to determine what the best shot is. And uh, so we look up to sh three shots in advance. And this is kind of what uh, the game tree looks like when we're searching for it. And uh, again, if you're interested in more details about the AI, uh, there's another paper that our lab has published. So moving on to some of the applications. The kind of the first and most obvious application of AR pool is the, the teaching and the training type application. Um, so it's really, really good for beginner players to kind of show them how they can make simple shots, how to line up for basic shots, how to try some slightly more advanced shots like bank shots, and uh, really get a feel for the basics of the game. Um, but another way that it can be used to teach is it can be used to kind of um, get more advanced players to start thinking a little bit more about their strategy and uh, you know, where they're going to leave the cue ball by working together with the AI system to, uh, to improve their game from a strategy point of view. So the, um, the market that we see for AR pool, uh, the most obvious again is kind of in pool halls and pubs where it could be used to attract more players to play pool and increase the revenue of pool tables, mainly just because people would be interested in the, the kind of novel aspect and um, you could kind of play handicap style games where you know, the, the good players aren't using air pool, whereas the more novice players are using air pool and um, kind of have an interesting interaction like that. Um, air pool, as I mentioned earlier, is mainly software based, um, which means an installation is relatively inexpensive in terms of hardware, um, which probably speaks well for kind of applying it in this type of uh, scenario. And finally, it would, it would definitely be applicable to residential type installations. AR pool, um, if, if you're building a pool room in a house, the incremental cost of adding AR pool on top of building a specific room for a pool table uh, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be too monumental. So there's been a pretty cool um, kind of press of AR pool, and I would just like to go over some of the notable kind of things it's done. Uh, in 2010, um, AR pool was on the Gadget Show where the, the host of the gadget show, he played a game of pool against a world champion eight ball player. Uh, he used air pool while the world champion was left kind of to his own device. And uh, they made a really neat little bit uh, that uh, you can watch on YouTube. And um, they actually, uh, the, the host of the show actually beat the world champion in one of the games using air pool, which was pretty cool. Kind of a similar type scenario in 2012 or just earlier this year actually. Um, Stephen Fry played a game of AR pool against Top Gear's Jeremy Clarkson. Stephen Fry was using AR pool while Jeremy Clarkson was kind of left to uh, play old-fashioned pool. 
and Stephen Fry was able to defeat Jeremy Clarkson in a game of pool uh, with the aid of our technology. And again, you can watch you can watch that game on YouTube. And then most recently, we took Airpool on a trip all the way around the world to uh, demo Airpool in India at several technology festivals, where it was uh, really well received to um, a ton of students over there. So that was um, also pretty exciting. So that actually brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, if you're interested in Airpool, definitely come, uh, definitely come talk to me. I was going to invite everyone to come down to the exhibition hall, but unfortunately, it's closing down at this point. So if you didn't see the demo, I'm um, really sorry about that. And uh, I just point you to our website where we've got links to all of our videos and um, some more information. So uh, if there's uh, time for any questions. Yeah, let's go ahead and do questions. After sure. So you need the AI. Are we, uh, are we live? AI knowledge to be able to do this, am I correct? To be able to AR artificial intelligence knowledge, to be able to... To do what you did. Yeah, to, to do the program, we, yeah, we use some AI programming. Yeah. Other questions from the audience here? I'm curious, I, I, actually, I actually played the AR pool in 2010 at Laval Virtual. Yes, that's the same one. Yes. Okay. And and when I played it, it was actually it was like quite out of alignment. Oh really? <laughs> and I was curious whether it, it it seems like if you're if you're having it travel a lot, um, is I, I imagine there must be like a great deal of calibration and everything involved and and having to move that from place to place. Yeah, actually, that's one of the things we've been spending a lot of time on recently. Um, is just improving the calibration pro pro uh, procedure and making it more robust when we take it places. Um, we used to have a mandate that we needed like at least a full day to set it up, and uh, I did a demo on TV a while ago, and I said I needed an hour, and I actually only used about 20 minutes of that hour. So that's one of the things we've really been improving on, because uh, the demo itself isn't all that different than what you saw at Laval Virtual, but from my point of view, it was a lot easier to set up. <laughs> so, All right, any other questions? This being the business track, and mm -hmm. you're being from a university, but it sounds like you're looking to monetize this? Yeah, absolutely. So that's one of the reasons why we're out here, is that um, our university has kind of reached the end of our time with this project. So we're hoping to try and uh, connect with some people that we might be able to partner with for a commercial uh, venture with AR Pool. So throwing that out there. <laughs> We right. will Thanks. we will move right along. Thank you, Kevin.